Hey everyone, it is Shannon and I'm here today to do a book haul and I didn't mean to do a book haul this month, I really didn't, but I just ended up at bookends. <laughs> as it happens, <laughs> um, <laughs> like as you do. Um, and uh, yeah, and anyway, I had a project brewing in my mind, which I talked a little bit in my most recent Friday Reads. Um, that's all about reading comprehension. And I thought if I wanted to go through with this, I might need to supplement my books because, you know, I don't have enough books. But it's a particular type of book that I was looking for. And if you haven't read my watched my Friday reads, I'm gonna leave it as a mystery for a while I share the books and then and, and then at the end I will share what the common theme is and what I'm going for. Um is that a good way to do it? Because then it's kinda of like a game, maybe? Maybe it'll make it more fun. I don't know. We're gonna go with that and see if it works. So here we go. Here are the books that I picked up at Bookends. And if you don't know, Bookends is the uh, permanent bookstore at the Toronto Public Library. I went to the one at the reference library. I think the one up at the Civic Center is uh, open, but I haven't um, I haven't gone yet. I think that might be on my 101. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, yeah, so um, Bookends I, uh, is at the Toronto Reference Library. It's the best deal in town. Most books are a dollar. And uh, I got all of these books for eight dollars. And um, I just, I love going. I love going. I love going. They're, they're a combination of donations and withdrawn materials from the library. And uh, it's just such a great deal. So first up, here is our first book. I have Inherit the Wind by Jerome Lawrence and Robert E. Lee. This is actually a play. Um, um, but it was made into a film, I think, in the 60s from that picture. Um, and I'm sure I know, I'm sure I've seen the film. I don't remember what it's about. And I'm sure I'll get to, like, this point and go, like, oh, yeah, it's about this. <laughs> Maybe I'll figure it out earlier. I don't know. I like reading plays. I know it's, sometimes it's, it's, it can be seen as a bit weird. Um, but I really enjoy reading them. Um, also, they're short and quick, generally because it's mostly dialogue and I like having the characters sort of come to life in my mind and um yeah so Inherit the Wind is the first one. The next one is one that I have sold so many copies of or I had when I worked at bookstores. This could this may have been the most popular best-selling book in the entire time that I worked at bookstores and that is the Bridges of Madison County by Robert James Waller. I did not remember the author actually, <laughs> which is funny because I think of, I just think of it as the Bridges of Madison County. And um, so again, this is another short title. It's under 200 pages, I think. Yeah, 170, 170. Um, and uh, and I have seen the movie with Clint Eastwood and isn't it Meryl Streep? Um, but um, that was years after actually. Uh, so I know the story, but I've never read it. And and I'm surprised. I don't think it's actually on any of my lists. I'm surprised it's not on the those books list. If the if the, some of the lists I did were earlier, like were in the '90s, then this definitely would be on a Zeitgeist list because it is just it was so like wildly popular. You know, and it was also at the time it was 1999. Let's see if this one is. Oh, this one's 17.99. Oh, it came down in price, or they bought it somewhere else. But it was 1999, 1995, and 21.35 with tax, and I sold so many, so so very many. So curious to uh, actually read it after all of these years. Uh, the next one I don't know anything about, and it is called "Be Good" by Stacy May. I'm not sure how to say that. Fowles, and this is a Canadian work. Um, and it's a group of Canadian 20-somethings, and I think they moved to Toronto, or it might be set in Toronto, no, set against the acutely drawn urban landscapes of Montreal and Vancouver. There we go, not Toronto. I, that is so Toronto of me to think that it was set in Toronto. I really thought it had maybe one of the other books is. Um, so yeah, so this one I am curious about. I like Canadian works. It has short chapters, which is something I do tend to, to like. Well, some short chapters, some longer chapters. It's a bit of a different, like it's a bit shorter. Um, and um, I'm curious to check it out. I don't know anything about it. It was a bit of more random pickup, um, but I do like to add Canadian works to the mix and something more contemporary is nice too. A lot of the Canadian books I have are, are classics or modern classics or whatever. Um, so I'm like, can any, are any Canadian books old enough to be classics? I don't know the answer to that question. Um, but yeah, so it, it's nice to have something urban um, and it's nice to have something that's newer. So I'm curious to see what that's like. Okay, this next one was a bit of a goof, to be honest. Okay, so now we have Delirium by Douglas Cooper. And it was right beside a book by Douglas Copeland, who is a famous Canadian writer. And I've read Life 
after God by him, and he wrote Generation X. So I thought this was also by Douglas Copeland. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> so this one is a total uh, random, although it's still, I think it's still Canadian. It's um, published by Vintage Canada. Um, I don't know. Actually, I don't know if that's, if it's Canadian. That I do not know. So, oh, I saw Toronto. So this is, this one, Toronto. There it is. It's amazing I can pick out Toronto. <laughs> Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Yeah, there, third line. <laughs> so this one has some Toronto content, um, but it has a very compelling first line on the, bl on the back. It goes, it, it is always Judas who writes the biography. Like where could that go? So I'm I'm that was that compelled me and um and then when I got home I realized it wasn't Douglas Copeland. <laughs> Whoops! But they did have Douglas Copeland books anyway. So this one I can't get these stickers off. I actually paid less than a dollar for this one, um because um they had a deal for five paperbacks for a dollar. So these ones actually all got included as paperbacks, even though they were with the trades. Don't tell. Um, so yeah, so, you know, all the proceeds go to the library if they want me to give them three more dollars. I will. I will go back. I will buy more. So those are the first four that I picked up. And then we go on to, um, Snowflower and Secret Fan, and this is by Lisa C. Um, this is actually one that I have heard of. Um, it's, I think it's historical fiction. Yeah, 19th century China. Um, and I think it may have been made into a film because I always buy books that have been made into films. I don't know too much about it. Um, uh, oh, wow. Endure the agony of footbinding and reflect upon arranged marriages, shared loneliness, and joys and tragedies of motherhood. So this is actually, if I put all that together, that's very different than a lot of the works that I tend to read, but I do like to expand my horizons. I don't read tons of historical fiction, especially historical fiction about women. Unfortunately, I find the oppression you know, uh, that is often put on women, historically or currently, uh, too hard to read about. So I don't always do it. But this one, I thought I would give it a shot. Um, and yeah, oh, well, you know, timeless portrait of female friendship. You know, that part, of course, feels good. So Snowflower and Secret Fan. Uh, next up, I have Breath by Tim Winton. This is actually the second Tim Winton. I just finished reading Blueback, which was in my last library haul. Like, I don't know if someone was just giving away all their Tim Winton uh, stuff. Um, he's an Australian author, and I loved Blueback. And this has also been made into a film. Yeah, okay. I, I, I hear you. I hear you. I buy a lot of books made into films. Um, but um, And the film has been released. And it's weird, because I had that the film was a dual male protagonist sort of coming of age story, which makes this cover feel a little confusing to me. Um, this was shortlisted for the Commonwealth Writers Prize for best book. Huh. So anyway, I loved the other work, so I'm going to try this one. This one, I don't know. He also wrote The Turning, which was also made into a film, but um, which I started at some point and it was so good, but I was like not in the mood to to read. Like I was just testing it out to see if I wanted to read it. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so good. But I never got back to it. So, but apparently I will probably get back to this one more uh, soon than the turning so breath. Um, and then we have this one. I went back and forth on whether or not I was going to get it or not. And that is I buy the river. Oh, I don't know how to say that. Piedra. I sat down and wept. Um, I've also read, this is by pa Paulo Coella. He wrote The Alchemist, which is another hugely popular book when I was working at bookstores. Um, and just generally, like when I picked up, brought this to the cash, it was like, oh, The Alchemist. I'm like, it's not actually an alchemist. It's the author of The Alchemist. Um, so my hesitation on this is I'm not, I don't, I have a feeling I wouldn't like The Alchemist. Um, so to read something by the same author feels a bit strange and feels also a bit strange not to start with someone's like really like most notable work so anyway but I did read the beginning of it and thought it was compelling and like the title alone is compelling I also have I have read I uh, by Grand Central Station I sat down and wept so maybe I just want to read all the I sat down and wept books I don't know so yeah so I don't know have you read this thoughts uh you know is it like The Alchemist? Is it not like The Alchemist? Would I like The Alchemist? And then this one is a bit out of, a little out of place. And I looked it up on Goodreads at the time and thought I had got the answer I was looking for on it, but I got the wrong answer. So anyway, this is Lost in Place, sorry, Lost in Place, Growing Up Absurd in Suburbia by Mark 
Salzman. And I could not tell, I don't know if it's just being impatient, I could not tell if this was fiction or nonfiction. Oh, look at that. It says it right up there. Memoir, nonfiction. But I looked it up at Goodreads and I thought I came down on it saying that Goodreads said it was nonfiction. So, but we all know that the Goodreads app is not, it, you know, it's, it's one thing that I almost always use the website and not the app because the app is not, it has lots of challenges and um, you can't click any of the things people like would tag this with. So that's what I was looking for, but they don't show on the app. The tags don't show, at least on Android. Anyway, so, um, well, this just sounded really interesting to me. So it's um, growing up in suburbia, but obviously, you know, interested in martial arts and it's supposed to be funny and stuff like that. So, you know, Bruce Lee and Ozzy Osbourne as, you know, references that totally got me. So, but this is nonfiction. So that makes it a bit out of place with the rest of the works, but um, I couldn't, I couldn't pass it up. This felt like a really fun, interesting uh, choice. So I picked it up. I think this is one. Yeah, this one actually has the uh, card cap at the back. So, from, I think it's from University of Toronto Schools. So, there you go. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, now to the last set of books. Um, th and this one I have, I don't know anything about. So, this is The Kappa Child by Hiromi Goto. Um, and it says, reminiscent... Oh, in a family not at all reminiscent of Laura Ingalls Wilder's Little House on the Prairie, four Japanese-Canadian sisters struggle to escape the bonds of family and landscape as inhospitable, inhospitable as the sweltering prairie heat. So, family story, um, Canadian set. I believe it's also a Canadian author. Um, let me see. Let me see. I think I checked, but I can't remember offhand. Doesn't say specifically, um, but um, this is the, one of the other ones that came in as a paperback. And um, yeah, I'm really curious about this. Again, I think it's a historical or historical-ish. The Little House on the Prairie reference makes it feel historical. I don't think that's the, the goal. Um, so, but yeah, I'm really curious. I'm, I think this might have been the first one that I picked out. All that green, you know. Yeah, so the Kappa Child. Be interested to see how that goes. Then I actually found, I am surprised, I didn't even know that these were sold in Canada. I actually found a, what are these penguin, these penguin ones that all the people love with the stripey sides. <laughs> um, and this is Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe. Uh, oddly, I don't think this is actually on, on all of my list. I did not even check to see if this was on the those books list. I just assumed it was, but I don't think it is. So whoops. But you know, this says it's regarded as the first English novel. Um, which I thought, I didn't think that this was what was considered that. But anyway, um, this is definitely a book I want to read at some point. Very beautiful uh, edition. It's, the inside's not bad. It's not bad. It's pretty, not a lot of white space. But, you know, it was a dollar. So I was like, yes. Unfortunately, it had a huge sticker on the back that I couldn't get the sticky sticky off. So I just put two post-it notes one up, one down, so they sort of overlap each other in a similar color, and I feel like hopefully, I might tape it down, which is a little, like, you know, but or I might just leave it as is, but it is so sticky, it just sticks to anything I put it down, but on the front looks nice, so eventually I will read this too, and last one I have is Midnight at the Dragon Cafe by Judy Fong Bates, um, and this was the Toronto Public Library's Book One Community Read 2011, not sure exactly what that is. Like, it kind of has a lot of words in there, so it's kind of clear. Um, and this one is um, set in a small... Looks like it's set in a small Ontario town, and again, is Canadian and historical-ish. So I ended up with a fair amount that are like that. Um, and um, I'm really curious to see what this one is about. So, yeah. So, and I think I this is one that I had heard of. Um, not all of these I had, but this one I had heard of. It's published by McClellan and Stewart. So this one's another Canadian one. So I'm pretty sure, pretty sure it's Canadian. I don't know how many people write about Ontario. And this has nice, nice, lots of white space. Very, and it's very floppy. So that'll be a nice, easy read. So those are all of the books I pick. Now I am wondering if anyone can figure out what the theme here is. And I'm going to put them together in a particular order that may or may not help. Because this is the lot of them. This is a lot of them. And this is actually, oh, and I, I also got a Harlequin 
heartwarming physical edition, which I had never seen before. Large print, fifth in the series, so that wasn't great, but often you can read them out of order. And I can't remember what it was called. Um, I posted it on Instagram, and I, when I went to do my picture in front of bookends, I took all of my books out, and I forgot to put that one back in, so I left it outside, and I'm so sad. <sighs> But it's available from the library to borrow from Overdrive, so I will read it that way. And it only cost me 20 cents because the paperbacks were five for a dollar on special deal. Usually they're three for a dollar. So it's okay, but I'm so sad. So I would have had 12 books, but I have 11. I think that's 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Eleven. So it's eleven. That's the Sesame Street song. If you're unfamiliar, so the common theme here. I am holding up eleven books. It's not. It's not a huge amount of space. So the common theme here is that I picked short books. I am going to be working on. I've decided to do sort of like a reading comprehension project. Work on my reading comprehension, and the approach I'm going to take is to read short novels. I want to read more novels. I haven't been reading tons of novels this year, so I thought a good way to go is to pick things that are short. So a combination of these books and also the ones I got at my last trip at Bookends, I am going to be reading from shortest to longest. So I'm actually going to read these in order. I'm going to read Inherit the Wind, which is under 100 pages, Bridges of Madison County, Be Good, Delirium, and so on and so forth. And I'll insert the ones I got from the last uh, public library, the last book and strip I got, and just start from the shortest to the longest. And my goal, my focus is going to be on reading comprehension, understanding the story, understanding what happens, following along with the story. So a lot of these are ones that I wouldn't necessarily pick out in terms of the genre, um, but they were all short. So I just went and picked all of the short titles that I could, like all of the short ones. And then from that, I narrowed it down to the ones that I thought I would enjoy the most. <laughs> and so all of these books are under sort of 350 pages. I think these three are under 200 pages. And then these are under these are 200 to 300, and then the last three are 300 and over. And the Robertson Crusoe I might leave till later, and the nonfiction I might leave till later. But that's my idea, and so I really hope that it's going to work. Um, I recently, I guess this is inspired because recently I read the saga of Ghost of Berling by Selma Lagerlof, and it was, like, really challenging, and I missed so much of it. And I'm like, wow, I'm not doing as much novel reading as I have been in the past, so this is kind of like my own homework, <laughs> you know? And so this is to get me back up there in terms of understanding and enjoying things um you know so like so like some of these titles I may or may not have been my first pick in terms of something that I would enjoy but they're going to work my reading comprehension muscles so that when I do read books that I enjoy I get more out of them that's the idea and I'm not like dissing any of these books these are all books that I'm still interested in but my goal was to pick things that were shorter so that I could get through them and I could work on them and and I think so that's my idea I don't know if it's going to work but <laughs> I think that um I think it's a good it'll be a good exploration and it'll be because they're shorter I will get through them hopefully faster and I just think it's gonna I think it's gonna help so anyway that's my idea we shall see how things go I'm actually going to be starting something else first and then I will get to inherit the wind um, and yeah so let me know how what you are reading these days or if you go to your library book sale I certainly didn't mean to go and I ended up paying a bit of a price on it, not not financially, like it was $8, I said, which is fine, but I went on a day I was doing other stuff, so I sort of overdid it, and I'm really, I'm still quite sore, actually, which was silly. Bad choices on my part, but that's, you know, own your choices, um, <laughs> the good and the bad, uh, so that's on me, but <laughs> at least I have lots to uh, read. <laughs> in the interim. So there you go. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be back with another video very soon. Bye!